You may notice the sun's pretty high up. Man, I don't know what happened. I woke up at like seven and peed, and I was like, I'll let that for another hour, and it's noon now. Slept hard. So I guess I needed it. Um, I'm gonna eat leftover cheese and meat and bread for lunch, and then we got some mining to do. I got most of my stuff tucked up under that tarp. I think I'm gonna sleep here again tonight, actually. Um, then I, so now I'm gonna go gold mining for a while, see what I can find. I wanna find a nugget or a little picker. Big chunk of gold instead of flakes. This is the place for it. And then when I get bored with that, we gotta run into town so I can get some more water and uh, I gotta eat, I don't know, food for dinner. Um, but I also wanna, drive up this peak right here is quail mountain i think i mentioned it last year but didn't get around to it i'm hoping today's the day tomorrow morning i'm going to meet with a guy who has a podcast uh he helped me out a couple days ago when i ran out of gas didn't get it on camera oh no <laughs> uh but yeah so you know we'll we'll do that here tonight and then got to drive up to uh copper mountain tomorrow for that and then i think i'm gonna stay in silverthorn get a room in a hostel so i can take a shower and do my laundry and stuff <laughs> and then yep that's it that's the plan let's go get some gold look at these massive piles of tailings i think these were from dredging but i'm, I'm standing on a 20 foot tall pile of rocks <laughs> the challenge is going to be finding a spot of virgin ground it's all glacial gold, so it's, you know, it's not concentrated by a creek. It's pretty well dispersed throughout here, but perfect. Whole lot of nothing. Whew. I didn't give this place a very good shot, but I'm thirsty and I don't have any more water. Mm. I gotta say, I... I keep coming back here all the time, but I don't like this spot. <laughs> Just all digging in somebody else's old tailings. And there's a trick to finding gold here because people find a lot of gold here, but I don't know what the trick is. It's not like normal placer mining. So you gotta kind of have a better understanding of the mechanics of the dredging that happened a hundred years ago than I do. It's neat to think about a hundred years ago bunch of people crawling all over this land digging up every patch of dirt they can find just like I was doing. 4.15 on September the 8th, 2023. We're going on a ride up Quail Mountain. Got the microphone on, a full charged battery. Probably should check how much gas is in the bike, but I got the spare now. I had to buy another MSR bottle in uh, Glenwood Springs because I left it unbuckled the first night we were camping. Left it unbuckled and rode down that hill to go get water. And it fell off somewhere and somebody picked it up and took it, so bye-bye. But I bought a new one. Crappy thing is that I ran out of gas in between those two times and had to have get help from some strangers, which is not how we want to do it. All right. How's the bike sound? Pretty good. I have bashed the exhaust. Oh, I hit a, I took a photo of the rock on the way out of Half Moon Creek a couple days ago. Uh, but I hit it so hard, it left like an inch deep bash in the header. Oh, man, I'm a little sore. I had a motorcycle crash last night. I, I won't say it like that. I, I dumped the bike. I'll show you the spot where it was. Uh, yeah, it's just this like left-hand turn that uh, that's just a basin full of flower fine dust. And uh, came up to the turn, braked, started to skid, and just uh, lost it a little bit, went over. I think maybe I was going 25. But I had all my gear on and uh, and the highway bars worked perfectly. I don't even have a uh, bruise or scratches or anything from it. I, uh, I think I bled most of the speed off the bike 
uh, while I was crashing. <laughs> man, oh man. This is my favorite part of Colorado. I'm sure I've, you've heard me say that a dozen times already, but... Just so beautiful. I tell you what, my back is a little sore. All the mining and all the riding and... I'm definitely a little, little battered up. Uh, so my fall into the creek yesterday, uh, the reason that, so there was that piece of grass that looked like footing, but it wasn't. But uh, I was trying to dodge around a sharp stick and stepped too close to the river. But that sharp stick got me on the inside of my thigh and I have this massive scab and uh, uh, bruise on the inside of my thigh, really painful. <laughs> But that's the cost, and I'm happy to pay it. Yep, here's where I dumped it. Right, you can see my skid marks right through here. It's good I didn't land on any rocks. So, that's where we're going, way up there. It's a rough road, and it's very remote. Like I. I don't think it's a ride that people do for fun. It's just a road that's there. Just realizing now that the handlebars are bent. <laughs> Oopsie. It's not the first time it's happened on this bike and it will not be the last. I'm gonna start this ride by telling you a story. And it's the story of the first time I ever uh, got to the top of this mountain. And it's uh, kind of an embarrassing story for me. I'm not, <laughs> not proud of it. Uh, so, uh, when I was in, I think I was maybe going into my senior year of high school, me and my best friend Noah, I mentioned him already, uh, we used to do an adventure every summer, so sometimes we went to South Dakota backpacking one year, and, uh, oh, we came up gold mining here, we came backpacking up here one time. But anyways, we were camped here on a two week long gold mining trip. And uh, it was towards the end of the trip. Uh, Noah, you could fact check any of this, but this was my perspective. We were like fighting with each other. Just, I mean, we had no closer friends there could have been, but after sleeping in the dirt for two weeks and uh, man, this road, sleeping in the dirt for two weeks and only eating shitty backpacking, cooking, and whatever we scrounged up, uh, having to wash all our dishes in cold water, dirty clothes, uh, we were kind of at each other's throats. And two, I wanted to mine and not hike, and he wanted to hike and not mine, so there were some creative differences. But I was a 17-year-old boy, uh, very angsty. Still am, thank you. Probably always will be. Uh, and my parents came out to visit. They wanted to see, they wanted to mine a little bit, but it, it was just too much. Like they were hanging out with him and I just got grumpy and we were fighting the whole time. So I was like, it, I'm getting out of here. And I uh, hopped in the truck, that 99 F-150, and I drove all the way out here at like seven o'clock at night and watched the sunset from the top of the mountain just needed some space to myself, you know. I hadn't been, neither of us had any privacy for two weeks, so it was good to be alone. And I felt a lot better by the time I got came down. We, uh, uh, he went to visit his aunt for a couple days and I went with my parents to go see some stuff for a couple days before we got back together. And uh, that helped a lot. Honestly, we just, just too much time, too much time together. Sucks. The washboards are terrible. Rattle testing the bike. So after this tonight, I think I'm gonna go into Buena Vista, find a nice brewery and sit and eat and hang out for a while. Just have some relaxation. Uh, have a 
planned out weekend, which is very odd. I'm not upset about it. That, um, tomorrow I'm meeting uh, Ron from Peace Love Moto. We're gonna just hang out and talk about motorcycles for a while. Uh, I actually met him just outside of Red Feather Lakes uh, last week. He helped me out when I needed to get some gas. It's exciting. His uh, his philosophy and the I listen to some of his podcasts between then and now. Yeah, it's a really, really good, positive view on motorcycling. I, it's refreshing. I feel like it's the every man's, you know, motorcycling attitude. The 99 percenters. Woo. Climbing, climbing. So the bike has been performing very well. It's, uh, you know, H01, it's my baby, my steed. Uh, she's beat up and ragged. Oh, this bike just gets abused and abused. And I don't say that like it's a bad thing, it's me doing it, so I'm not upset about it. Uh, we've really learned a lot of stuff and made a lot of production changes based on uh, issues we found because I beat this bike up so much. So this trip, you will have noticed uh, some of the things that are different about H01, even more so, uh, trying out some new prototype stuff. So uh, we're working on a deluxe saddlebag for the 450. That's a, uh, it's a bigger saddlebag and uh, it's gonna be mounted off of the cargo rack. So it'll be a companion item to the cargo rack. Uh, and that is entirely born out of my experiences from last year. So uh, coming up here, like just is not enough space to do a two week long trip. And I wanna be able to do a two week long trip. People like Pete Romarino and the Felix brothers have also, uh, also weighed in on that. That's something that 450 owners want is a bigger saddlebag, really a more serious setup for touring, which I'd love to see more people doing. Um, the other thing you can see right here is the uh, the windscreen on this bike. So again, kind of targeting at more touring. This is something that Richard has especially brought up. He, uh, you know, he's a very tall guy. He's got a wide frame. And uh, he says when he's going 85 on this bike, it feels like he's hanging onto the handlebars for dear life and he's trying to be pulled, plucked right off the top of it. Uh, and I agree, this is not a, an especially you know, it's got no fairings, no aerodynamic stuff to it at all. So if you're going 85 or 80 all day long, that's a, that's a lot of, uh, a lot of muscle you're having to use. Uh, and also I exclusively ride with a three quarter helmet. I just, I love it. Having the wind on your face is, is half of what motorcycling is for me. Really smelling the, the sagebrush when I come up into the plains and I don't want a piece of plastic between me and that, but Having a windscreen makes that a lot more pleasant. I've got it kind of set to where the buffeting is uh, just at the crown of my helmet. Uh, and it it doesn't stop bugs or <laughs> whatever, but, uh, oh, did I say road closed? But it, it does help a lot. Oh man, this road is loose. Aw, oh, man. Oh, that's a bummer. That's new. I was kind of excited to show you the mining stuff that was going on up there, but... Let me ride in there and see if there's anybody there. Ask him if I can ride to the top. Oh, amateur hour. The bike has definitely lost a fair bit of power being at 10,000 feet and above. Don't see anybody. All right, bummer. Okay, I'm gonna have to find another ride for you guys then. Dang it, does that mean I have to record? Does that mean I have to record all of this all over again? I have to tell these stories twice. Lame. Uh, I 
not sure what to do. Is this your claim up here? At the very top. Yeah. Oh, at the very top? I was just sightseeing and wondering if I could ride to the top. You think, like, do people really care? It said. I don't care. You going up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No yeah. <laughs> yeah. See you there. Dude, bad ass. All right. It's back on, Jordan. I want to find a spot in the shade and wait for the, uh, the dust to settle from her car. Dude, badass. I don't know if I've seen a lot of women miners. That's awesome. I'm going to Google real quick what the elevation of Quail Peak is so I can tell you. Quail Mountain, excuse me. 13,465. Holy shit. No wonder the bike's having trouble. I want credit, okay? I stalled the bike because, uh... It's got 15% less horsepower or something. No fault of Janus, that's just physics. There's less oxygen. All right, let's row. So the windscreen is a new thing. Uh, this is an aftermarket one. Uh, and the saddlebags I have on here are aftermarket. They're from companies, uh, the, the saddlebags are actually Duluth bags. Uh, we're doing a uh, collaboration bike with them, which is really cool. So they custom made us some saddlebags that are their pattern, but made for the bike and with our waxed canvas, I believe. Really cool. So uh, keep an eye out for that bike. I'm sure we're gonna be posting photos of it everywhere. Um, but the windscreen is an aftermarket one. Uh, kind of the idea with these is that uh, we don't have any experience with a windscreen on the 450 or, or the deluxe saddlebag idea. So let's just put some, you know, spend 50 bucks or 100 bucks on a windscreen and 100 bucks on some saddlebags. Put them on the bike and see what I like, what I don't like. The, uh, the other thing are the highway bars. You can see down there, they're in all the photos. Uh, I really like these actually. They have a they have a really well thought out mounting system. Like uh, those highway bars are really uh, really sturdy on there. And uh, like I discovered last night, uh, the the highway bars themselves, the mounting plates for them bent where they're bolted, and uh, instead of the frame being damaged, which is something that Richard was worried about, and me too. I, I thought it was worth consideration, but now we've got a real world example, and uh, I am fairly confident that those highway bars can whew, can go back to being uh, in the correct position with some with the application of a vise and a hammer, a little bit of percussive maintenance. Um, any faster than I was going, though, man, I don't know. You would rip those highway bars up, but you know, two hundred dollar. Or I don't know what we're gonna sell them for. 300 bucks, some, something around there. A set of highway bars, and you get to save your brake pedal, your engine case, uh, your leg, perhaps? Um, really, it's something we don't talk about a lot, because who wants to talk about crashes at a motorcycle dealership, right? But these bikes handle wrecks spectacularly well. Because of their, they're so rigid, uh, and they're set up to with a really sturdy steering stop where the highway bars will not rotate or excuse me the handlebars will not rotate farther than they're supposed to so if you drop a bike the only thing that gets messed up is your saddlebags in the back your grips your you know your levers probably your shift pedal and your your brake lever but stuff like the tank and uh and uh you know all the structural parts of the bike are uh, rarely damaged. We've seen, we had a lot of, when a bike gets wrecked, the insurance company sends it to us to evaluate and see if it's totaled or not. And, uh, oh shit, ouch. So I, I get to see all the bikes that wreck. And uh, man, I've seen Pete Marino's bike, he crashed at 70 miles an hour on the interstate. And uh, like it pretty much just needed new handlebars and the grips and, uh, I think he's riding around with the same ratty pair of saddlebags <laughs> that's got a, you know, big, all the leathers scraped off the corner of it because it skidded along the highway for who knows how far. But the highway bars are going to be a great addition to that. I mean, already this bike would be 
you know, I'd have to put a lot new, uh, more new parts on it if I didn't have those. So uh, I think people are really going to like them. And uh, they're a size where you can buy uh, aftermarket clip-on pegs for them. And that's what I'd recommend. You could kind of put your feet in them, but you should have pegs on the outside. And, uh, you know, it, for respect for the people who don't want that, we're not putting tabs on there. Or at least that's what I'm thinking right now. Oh, this is very cool. I think... I think that's a line for an aerial tramway to bring uh, ore down. Not 100% on that. That's what it kind of looks like, though. So last time I was here, there were people mining right here at this spot, I think. I remember there's a there's like a really old miner's cabin up here that's so cool. This uh, I looked up one time and I'll find some more info for you to share. But uh, this is like a people have been mining up on this mountain for a long time. I mean, not a long time, but it was uh, it was mined for the entirety of the gold rush, I believe, in this area. Jeez, Louise. Oh yeah, there it is. Isn't that awesome? Can you imagine? So, the life of a prospector, right? In that time, your job was to come up into the hills and find where the gold was, and then mining, uh, you know, then they could bring the mining operation up here and set up. Like just wandering up in the hills with a burrow and a gold pan and a shovel, rifle, no people for miles and miles around. Totally, you know, self-contained, independent, really cool. And then the second wave was probably like where this cabin came from. So prospectors came up here, found gold, found the load. Uh, and then the second round of people built log cabins up here while they were mining. And man, oh man, look up here, all of this stuff. See, this whole river's been washed out. I wonder if this was hydraulic. Almost certainly, just the landscape is destroyed. All these piles of tailings up through here. Oh, look at that, there's another house. Gorgeous. So actually I think that's where I went when I was in high school, up there. But I saw her car going all the way up here and I kinda wanna see what a commercial mining operation looks like. I'm gonna assume this is her spot. Oh, this is cool. Old Sin Mine. I hear some machinery up there. Let's try going up the other way to the peak. All right, this way. Yeah, so. We're gonna take that road that goes uh, next to that cabin there. Ah, shit. Well, what am I supposed to do here? Tell you what, I am not crossing locked gates because I don't want to get shot. Gold miners are a protective bunch. Oh, I'm stuck now. Um, I didn't, uh, <laughs> I didn't point it out on the way up, but right where that cabin is, somebody stood in the road and it looked like 60 to me, dumped two full mags out of an AR and all the brass is laying in the road. Perhaps a warning. 
not heated. So, uh, one other thing new about H01 on this trip is the uh, MSR bottle mount. And uh, I'm excited for that. I, I really feel a lot, and I know a lot of our customers do too, feel a lot more comfortable going into remote areas when I know I have like a little bit of extra fuel. So it's a, I think it's about 20 miles extra fuel. On a highway, you know, not like this. Stalled her again. Um, so anyways, I got that mount right there. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, right behind your left calf. And I don't think it will interfere with uh, riding two up, you know, having a spot for your foot, or and, and it's not going to mess with any of the new deluxe saddlebags or the old saddlebags. Uh, it's just a really nice spot to tuck it in there and totally forget about it, you know. Oh, there's Twin Lakes. We were looking the other way. Wow. Dead quiet. Closed to all vehicles. Bummer, man. Well, we'll walk up there. Isn't that, I think this is a test pit right here. Somebody dug, probably a long, long time ago, dug that big old hole by hand with shovels, looking for a couple bucks. Looking for a lot of bucks. Damn, I love this motorcycle. The final thing, I don't have it on here so I won't show you, but I'm working on, so on the other side of where the fuel bottle is, getting our tool roll mounted there, which has also been really nice. That bottle tucks right in there, doesn't it? That's one dusty, dirty bike. Gorgeous. Whew, my head's sweaty. Everything tastes like dust. I haven't showered in literally a week, so yeah, that's what it looks like, sleeping in the dust. It's interesting to know all these trees were cut by hand. That's what they built their cabins out of and then nothing replaced them. Whip my ass climbing up here. Can you imagine digging that giant pit out looking for gold? I wonder if they found any. Oh, you know what? Oh, this is amazing actually. Talking about prospectors and what they did. Finding load sites. So some dude a hundred years ago was climbing along this hill looking for this. Quartz rock with iron through it. Wow, look at that. It's pretty nice looking. I bet you they were very excited when they found this. So they find this spot, then they dig it out, see if there's gold there, and then they call the mining company in. If I remember, there's some cabins on top of this hill. Summit with me. Nope, never mind. <sighs> Isn't that something though? So actually this is Coil Mountain right here. So the peak of that is 13,600. I don't know where we're at, but it's enough to make me out of breath. <laughs> you can see the bike way down there. No motor vehicles allowed up here. The bike's been doing really well. So right here, this is Two Lakes, the town. I don't know why they call it that. Uh, Maybe somebody could love it. let me know in the comments. That lake way off in the distance there, I think is the fish hatchery. One of these days I'm gonna ask somebody, why are they hatching fish all the way up here? What, what's the deal with that? What kind of fish? Uh, and then way up this valley, right around the curve to the right is, uh, is Leadville. And Mount Elbert and Mount Massive right there. Or excuse me. Up there. Yes, Elbert's a pointy one. 
Let's walk the ridge line a little bit. Oh, look at that. Somebody's been up there. I really like imagining those dudes who dug that test pit, right? They probably went right up to where I was sitting and caught their breath sitting in the exact same place, looking out at the exact same view. see where we have to go all the way down that water right there going up there is cash or excuse me right here is cash creek running parallel with the road and you drive right off the cliff of those high plains into the valley and that's where granite is okay let's go get something to eat not be accused of not being cool. fire started I'm hoping this is enough wood for tonight I'm I kind of have my doubts last night was a little chilly without the fire going I could not be bothered to cut more though Whew. all right let me get some more wood cut and set up I am ready to take a load off well it's late I'm going to bed tired oh Good kind of tired though. Not such a bad way to live, huh? All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Go ahead and check out some of the other videos in this series. I'm, I'm here in Colorado for two full weeks roughing it. So check out some other videos from that trip and uh, I'll see you next time.